When he was in prison, Franny founded one of Australia's most ruthless gangs, Outcast. OC for me started from there, you know, I felt like an outcast, the, the real deal, you know, this is some bad men in here, you know. It's no longer like street gang stuff. Here it's like straight to the death, like if, if you say the wrong word you'll get chopped from your own boys. ...to be part of a newly formed Pacific Islander jail gang known as the Outcasts. So we got to roll with you, we got to um, go with the punches, this is what my people's doing, so you, you know, you made your bed. Yeah, in jail, it just become an ugly place for us, bro, for our people. Man, I just said there right there, I was like, God, I give my life to you fully, you know. I give it my whole heart to you now. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, another day that you have made. Let us rejoice. So just like that you speak, speak through us, let us be of one mind and that you bless each and every soul that's watching this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, my also, how about you introduce yourself, brother, and where you're from? Uh, I'm Francis. Um, everyone knows me as uh, Franny Loko. I'm from Sydney, Australia, and uh, a place called Mount Jort. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it, my also. Born and raised in Australia. And um, yeah, that's basically it. All right, now, well, so this is the brother Francis, as he said. Um, some people know him as Franny Loko, maybe in a past life in that. Um, a lot of people knew him by that name. Um, like, man, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show also. I've actually had a lot of requests. Um, I have this man right here. Um, a lot of people already know who this guy is. Yeah, I don't I don't really view myself in, in any kind of, like, spotlight. I still see myself as the same Franny from when I was young. And I think, like, I just get shocked when I come out and I see people and they're like, they're like, oh, we didn't expect you to come talk to us. I was like, man, I'm not. Leonardo DiCaprio, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just, I'm just your normal also, you know? Like, I'm in your normal house down the road. I do my walks every day. Like, I'm not, like, some guy who's got nice cars and nice things. So, I'm not I'm not really sure what people know me for, but, um, yeah, I've, I do music and stuff like that. I've, I do understand that people have come through my Instagram and said they love my music, even though I've never released anything. Everything's been leaked <laughs> from other people that I sent them to. <laughs> I, never, I never actually released anything, so. Um, I mean, that, I, I, that's how I came across you originally. This was through the music, yeah. and like you said, all unreleased stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not many people know this stuff. Oh, yeah, so I've had a lot of requests to get the brother on here now. So I will say that he's a humble man of Christ. He's a brother in the Lord here. Um, both of us are born again Christians. And I guess, um, you know, like a lot of the other people who have appeared on the show, he's got a story of redemption. So, so the also here, Franny, was actually a, a member or founding member, um, leader allegedly. I'm not sure, but the, that was the, the word that gets around that. Um, <laughs> he, was, uh, he was a member of a pretty notorious prison gang um, over there in Sydney. So I guess... Um, that's how a lot of people do know him but again all glory to God he's um, been able to move man. past that obviously he would be a man that still has a lot of love for the for the people who are still yeah. in that world I mean also what so Mount Druid is it Mountie yeah yeah so that's so, so what were you born there Rose? were you born in New South yeah, Wales or? I was born here our, um, not many people was born in Mount Druid in the actual hospital so we're like the neighboring hospitals like in the PN and, and stuff like that. So I was born in the PN, which is Penrith. And for me, like, it's one of the most um, place. Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, you can just see the island culture everywhere. You know what I mean? You see people ear level lovers. You see people doing like jandals and churches, Samoan churches, Tongan churches. Just, just everything is is made for us here around here. So yeah, it, it's it's an awesome place to grow up for an islander. Yeah, I went to a prime school called Trigui. Um, That's just, like I always say, it's, I, I believe Trigui is the heart of Mount Druitt. A lot of people beg to differ. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, that's my local school. So yeah, Trigui. And then um, later on, went to a high school called St. Dominic's College. How, how was school for you? Also, I was a good kid, man, to be honest. I was a, I was a good kid. I was raised by um, my grandma. So she was a pastor's wife. So, yeah, it was very, um, there was a lot of discipline, a lot of respect, a lot of manners. I was a very, um, I'd like to say I was a very quiet kid, good kid. Honestly, when I was uh, around 
think 15, 14 when my uncle passed. Um, in my household was basically me and my grandmother. My, I had a couple of aunties and that and my uncle. But by the time my uncle passed, my aunties and that have already passed, uh, moved. So he was like the protector, provider, whatnot. He was 36 when he died. So, yeah. Still young. He, yeah. Yeah, he passed away, had a heart attack. So, yeah, uncle passed. He was like my brother. And um, he just had to have um, a family member come in, come with a husband. And, yeah, this guy, um, he he was um, abusing me, yeah, and molesting me um, at, around that time. Uh, so, yeah, that's where it started, going a bit off the rails. I just started um, trying to not come home. Started staying, hanging around at the streets, started jigging school. Um, by then, I was already out. I started going to Mount Jewel High School. And, um, yeah, I just started being influenced and followed the, followed the flow of things. Yeah, so after the abuse, I just went down a path of... Um, just just addiction you know i just started drinking i started um alcohol was my only thing i was just pump goon every day and um yeah just i just uh eventually i found people who were like me not in the sense of being molested i didn't know if anyone was being molested or not i just seen the same kind of these guys hanging around the park too at these weird hours of the night so i just started chilling with them and you know i just these guys took me in, accepted me for who I was. These were gang members um, uh, from the area. And um, yeah, I just kind of followed what they done. They done robberies, I done that, you know, they done, um, they smoked and drank, I smoked and drank. And that kind of lifestyle led me to juvie in prison. And, and um, yeah, I eventually got to prison. So like, when did you start getting arrested and, you know, and all of that stuff like 15 16 roughly around that age um the crimes were just getting more frequent you know we were drinking more and so the crimes were happening more and um i got a few chances from juvie i went to juvie and they they you know they were pretty easy on me they seemed they were like doesn't make sense you know how's this kid come from this he's family actually come to court when I go to court and stuff, you know, they're like, this kid has a good family, has good support. He has people who can get him a job and whatnot. So what's, why is he just being a little brat, you know, and just doing all this? I mean, cause yeah, you know, obviously no one knew about the abuse and things. Nah, yeah, no people, one knew about know. it at that time. That's right. So even your family's tripping out as well, yep. though, isn't it? Yeah. So my family, yeah, they didn't know until, until the podcast, <laughs> so that last podcast, so I don't know if the whole family was like, hey, mm -hmm. this guy, you know, but yeah, um, yeah, it was just, they, they were lenient on me and Juvie and then got to 18, bro, no leniency there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> straight to jail. No bail, just no jail. More chances, yeah. <laughs> no more bail, so <laughs> straight jail here. So yeah, I was in shock. I was like, yeah, we're just going to spend one night. I was full talking to people like I knew the system, you know. They, you, you just spend one night and then get bail and it's all sweet, you know. Okay, and they said bail refuse. I was like, oh, what's this? <laughs> and so, yeah, that's where I stepped into prison, man. And Well, how would you, how, how was that per, per, the prison experience for you? And like, how many times have you been to prison? I've been to prison four times. The longest of that being seven and a half years and the other ones were broken up in like 15 months here, a few months there, a few months, nine months here. Mm. So, yeah. Um, me personally, I was, I went in, because I went in by myself, most people are going with coies and stuff like that. So they get to be yeah. their, their co-offenders. I went in by myself. So, and I just remember being on the truck next to this big white guy. He had like a massive scar on his head. He was bold and that. And um, yeah, I was scared. Eh? I was not gonna lie, bro. I was straight scared. I was, I, was looking, <laughs> I was looking at him. I was looking at his knuckles, trying to size him up. I was thinking, bro, this guy's KKK or something. You know? <laughs> I, know, I didn't know how the system was. was. When I went into prison, and I'm thinking prison is like the movies. You know what I mean? Like 
it's gonna be everyone's like jacked up and just full on like and then when I went in it was bad but the villains don't look as bad you know like compared to the people I've went to war with in the streets in Mount Druid like man you're fighting islanders that are like you know, <laughs> now you go inside and everyone's like on heroin and that <laughs> so it's like <laughs> I don't know, it was just different. It didn't take me long to kind of um, to kind of adapt. When I was outside, I, I was just always never home. You know, I didn't have a home, not because of my family, it was because of myself. You know, I didn't speak to my nan about it. I didn't want my nan to get hurt. You know, I didn't know what this guy was capable of. And yeah, so going into prison now, I got like, I got people to hang with every day. You know, you meet some very good usos in jail, you know, some very good dockers and good brothers. So, man, I, I fell in love with the place, you know. I got fed three times a day. I got a shower, a toilet. I got clothes, you know, like I, everyone's wearing the same thing. So it's all equal, you know. It's not like, mm. oh, he's got nice clothes. I've got, like, holes in my shoes. I can just go and get new ones, you know. So... So yeah, so I mean, so you got, so you come out. So how was that first time? Um, how, where did life go for you from there? Just went straight back to it, bro. Just went back to the drinking. That's all I wanted to do. Cause I, the first time I went in, I got on a bup habit. So I was smoking bup a lot on the uh, the last three months, but I never touched it for twelve months. Then the last three months, uh, for some reason, I just wanted to be with everyone, you know, and I just wanted to kind of like. Um, in, have a good time with everyone so that turned into a habit full-blown habit so when i got out man i was sick bro. i was hanging out and so i just drank for a week straight and just continued in the same the cycle you know just drinking and it was very depressing time for me when i got out first time and yeah, yeah that's why i didn't last long I was, I last a few months bro and i was back in i went back in for for a string of things of crimes so, so how was it coming in that third time then by that point? That time was always different, man. I, I came into a different ball game, you know. The first time I was in, we were in young offenders. Um, so that's from 18 to 25. So, so how, how was mate? How was it walking into mainstream? Mainstream was, man, it was, um, well, um, it was just straight, straight gangster, bro. You knew you were in, like, this is... The, the real deal you know this is some bad men in here you know it's no longer like street gang stuff like um where it's just um you know fighting and stuff and standovers here it's like straight till the death like if if you say the wrong word you'll get chopped from your own boys you know so it was just like almost kind of like felt like blood and blood out vibes you know <laughs> um like what was the first jail that you went to like the after at that point Mainstream was so Silverwater is everyone goes there. That's your remand prison, you know. So already there, that's where you'll see some old school boys there. Depends what pod you go to. Um, I got there was there it was just man. It was um, I just had some older boys there and they kind of put me in line, you know. But it was a different world, bro. It was like I come from a place where you can have fun, like you can chill with your sorts, you know. You can muck around and make jokes now I've just come into this new world where I remember I was with one of the dockers, older dockers and I was um he was he was watching the news and I couldn't I can't stand the news, you know. Um back then when I was a kid, even now I can't stand it. But um yeah I was just sitting there and I was just like kind of putting my fingers on the wall. I was like drawing on the wall like and I was kind of humming because I was I was like um yeah I was just like humming some like J Boog song or something, you know what I mean? And this guy's like, he just turns to me, he's like, Oi, he's like, Can you stop that? Because you're annoying, you know. But the way he said it was like, I was like, damn, you know what I mean? Like, I thought you were my, my brother. <laughs> but it's all good, you know. We it's that's not my that's his house, you know. I moved to his house. So I was like, all right, you know, I gotta pull my socks up, you know, and this is this is how we gotta roll in here. We gotta um go with the punches this is what my people's doing so you, you know you made your bed laying it so yeah it was, and i, I, it was, I guess I, I guess what you're saying there is i guess the reality for most people for mm -hmm. almost you know um kids that are or um you know young adults that are first going into mainstream um, yeah. i guess i guess that is 
always the initial shock, isn't it? Like, oh, yeah. well, it's, it's not as if, as loose as, you know, on the outside yeah, with the, the, postcode, the postcode stuff. And, you know, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's exactly. a bit... Th- I mean, when I first went to prison, I mean, I remember one of the first prisons I went to, I mean, we were on the yard with boys. We were from the same side of Melbourne, but like different sides, you know yep. what I mean? But now we're all yeah. together, like hanging out and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It takes awesome, getting used to it. Yeah, it takes the getting yep. used to it at first, but then, you know, it just becomes yep. how it is. I'm glad you brought the podcast stuff up because that got shut out straight away, you know? Um, there was a couple of us young ones and, you know, like, not that I was really into it anyway. I was just hard man draw, but I wasn't like, we grew up through the system with the bullies from inner west and southwest. So we really were kind of familiar with each other. Um, but it was like the, the older boys kind of like set the tone for that. You know, they said, listen, bro, like, it wasn't even a thing. They didn't even need to tell us. You know what I mean? We just already knew, like, we're just, um, you know, we're just following what the, the older boys do and what they say and we knew they were all from different areas so it was awesome bro because some people that I probably would have never spoken to I got the chance to talk to in there and notice that man there's not much differences between us just time changed bro as time time went on uh, inf- uh the jail system brothers got more into the drugs um they started loving the drugs more than honor more than g-code and um the system started changing you know um people started accepting things that were not that are unacceptable in prison you know like rapists and stuff like that and um just people would take them just because just to get numbers or they would take a rapist because he had drugs you know and Mm. well i mean when when would you say things shifted for you bro because i mean like you said man you know obviously you came in and um you know, you had your way about you and the way you were and things like that. But then, yeah. I, like, would you say you got, like, things ramped up a bit for you while, while you were in there or, like... um Yeah, well, like, uh, before jail, I was a good kid, you know? Like, I come from a good family. Even though yeah, I was me hanging, too, man. Yeah, even though I was hanging around gang members when I, outside when I was getting molested and stuff, um, I had to, you know what I mean? Like, and, and I was getting bullied from my brothers, you know? But it was better than getting raped, you know? I, I got pissed on. I've had my eyebrows shaved weekly for my own brothers, you know. It was funny because it was funny to them, you know, to treat me like that. But, you know, I'd rather honestly cop that than what I was copying at home, you know. And so I never was a savage type of, of a person, you know. I always had a, um, just a, I don't know, my, my nan had instilled some good values in me, I'd like to say. And um, I carried that with me, even in the streets and, just started putting in work for my people, for the Islanders and for whatever cause they were doing. I had my own way of being an Islander and, and showing how I'm proud of my culture, but other people had theirs. And I, like I said, I just, that's what I felt I had to do at that time. And um, yeah, I, I, I pushed forth with that cause of, you know, just following what, blindly whatever I was told to do and, um, and, and told it was for my people. So yeah, that's where, I stopped actually talking to other races and I started becoming racist, you know, because I knew these guys are my enemies now and I don't want to make friendships because I'm not a treacherous type person to be, to, you know, give you love and then stab you from behind, you know? So I'd rather just not talk to anyone at all and keep them far away from me. Said so I don't have to hurt you, you know, and, and be known as a treacherous person. Well, I mean, man, so, that, I mean, that New South Wales prison system, man, it's a bit of a different beast, isn't it, I hear? Because, I mean, you've got mm-hmm. yards over, you've got yards, you've got prisons in, in New South Wales where it's actually racially segregated, isn't it? And it's it's not like that anywhere yeah, else. Yeah. In a, it's not like that anywhere else in Australia. It's only in New South Wales, isn't Australia, it? Australia, yeah. Yeah, that's down at Goulburn. Yeah, so Goulburn, it's like that. Islanders and with Islanders and stuff like that. Yeah, um, OC come about also... Sort of, um, for me, it's hard to say because, like, it was established in 2015 in Goulburn when I was at Goulburn with a few of the brothers. Um, but for me, the cause of OC was just standing up for polys, you know, Samoans, Tongans, Maldives, Fijians. It was a very broken system, you know, for our people. They were just getting, it. like I said, we were good before and then it just started changing, you know, because a lot of our brothers 
uh, a lot of our good brothers or staunch brothers, people of, of power, they went and um, they kind of went and, you know, they either went bikies and stuff like that. They went and joined other people's gangs, you know, and left kind of like the average poly behind. And um, yeah, so whether that was bikies or Muslim or whatever, you know, they went those ways. So it just, the system become a part, uh, the system just became a very sad place for Islanders, you know, but, um, I started seeing it. I started seeing people treat my people wrong, you know, they were including the guards. They would, um, you know, skip the boys' dinners and stuff like that and skip the boys whenever they, it was um, not enough food and stuff like that. They would make sure it was the Islanders who missed out because there was only a couple of us. And what little there was, they were separated. They were divided because they were too much of this Samoan, Tongan, Maori stuff. You know, I'm not Island, I'm Maori, I'm not Tong, uh, Samoan, I'm Tongan, you know. So um, coming from Mandrill, like I said, it's a very poly place, you know, and I, I don't see any difference between Samoan, uh, Tongan, and Maori, you know, Fijian and Tahitian, whatever, Tokyo Lao. Um, and so, yeah, I just chose not to join any kind of like bikers or any other religions or anything like that. I just stuck to, to being Islander. And that's where that pride kind of started settling in. And like I said, the, the prison system was transforming me, making me to this kind of savage that I never was but it's like this is what you got to do to get toilet paper this is what I've got to do to be left alone this is what I've got to do now it's not just for myself I already got that now it's like doing it for everyone else you know what I mean so now it's like you know I'd go up and and talk on behalf of other brothers now who, who were you know who were weak or whatever seemed who were looked at as weak or um, so yeah I started that's where a lot of the drama started coming from um, was just standing up for other brothers, other polys, and just you know, just getting them together and just uniting them, and just telling them, look at, look at, look, look right next to you. We're all the same color, you know. We all come from the same people. Your nan looks like my nan, you know what I mean? Like it's we're not. Why are you getting petty over little, you know, little things? Like we're all Polynesians, but these guys don't care what country you're from. They're all bashing all of you, and you's they'll bash a tongue in the sun ones over there standing there. You know, and, and same vice versa. And then, um, so yeah, it was just, I had that pride was was from my, my upbringing for my people. And like I said, it was just sad to see other brothers kind of like, I don't know, almost sell their soul. Well, what do you, what do you reckon was your scariest moment in there? So, I mean, um, I heard you share that story about when you're in the cell and you, um, you had a, a guitar come over your head while you were asleep. So I was like, I needed the ice at that. That's what I thought at the time. And we got on the ice and we had stayed up all night and I was just like talking to him. I crashed out and then I could hear like, um, just kind of like a mumbling. And then I look up and I, it's, everything's dark. And yeah, um, next minute I just felt something smashed out on my head. And yeah, I noticed it was a good time. Yeah, that went for 40 minutes, brother. Just wrestling and I don't know if someone buzzed up or if the guard was just doing his routine check, you know what I mean, at, at night. But, yeah, because we were just wrestling and, and fighting and biting. The, well, he was doing some real possessed stuff, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's how I got the scar there. And he bit me here. He was, eat, was trying to eat me and stuff like that. So Before you were getting out, I guess – your name was getting out a little bit through the music, you know what I mean? Yep. Because um, yep. I guess, you know, well, Masi Rook and that was coming out in Hooligan Hefts and then, you know, the music mm. was pumping. And so um, yep. a bit of hype was being built up and you know what I mean? So how yeah. was that How was that for you? Like at that time in your life and like you're being released and things like that and you've got all these plans for the music. How how, how was that time in prison, man? Um, it, was a, it was a battle you know, because I knew what I was battling with. I knew that stepping into that, if I wanted to go into the industry of music, I knew very well Satan is there. You know, I mean, Satan is anywhere you don't put God first. And if your music is not about God, strictly God, then it, you leave room to be corrupted. Well, when, when, so when did that start, Dennis? When, when, when did that, um, you know, that really Christ-driven Holy Spirit time, when, when did that start for you in prison, Oof? Or was it like just said, that it whole just time? Built. 
it built. Mm -hmm. No, so 2012 is when I kind of like felt Jesus. I knew this is the real deal, man. You know what I mean? Um, I was in Segro for the um, that first time in seven the seven and a half years. It was the first time I actually went to Segro in that sentence. And I was actually, it was like I said, it was a harder jail. It was Lifco now, so it's more Maxo and men um, men's jail, you know. So when they had me in there, they were just doing everything to me, you know, to make me break you know and to be honest i broke you know and i was like i was like man this is this is too much for me you know um so i prayed and i just seeked god you know and i just spoke to jesus in there and jesus just filled me you know so from there on also i couldn't let that go i wasn't gonna let that slide you know i was like no i'm not gonna be fake like that you know just cry out to jesus in segra and then come out and then you know, just like, yeah, fuck life for life. Don't worry about church. You only scare people go to church. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was just, that was the seed. And then it just grew from there. You know, it just uh, kept growing. And like yeah, I so, so what, yeah, so how was your thinking? My thinking like, like was... No, like, like knowing that you have the potential to like... Blow up. Yeah, to yeah, blow um, up. I mean, how, how, how was that in your walk? Was it challenging? It was very challenging, bro. Because I just seen... There were so many reasons why to do it, you know. Like, there were so many reasons why I can help my community, you know. Like, I can, you know, I can have money so I can actually buy things, like, you know, like, create things, you know, like, uh, businesses and stuff like that for, not for myself, for my brothers to come home so they don't have to trap. So they can, like, you know, i just seen that side of it. Um, and... Yeah, but I just was real with myself, you know. I just kept because I kept reading the Bible honestly every day. The word just kept convicting me, you know. The Bible is just straightforward if you give it, you know. If you read it, you know. If you read it and, and you you're real with God and you're real with yourself, man, you you won't create loopholes. And that that's pretty much was it, you know. It's like what kept playing in my head is don't glorify yourself. It wasn't you. It wasn't you, you know. And your name is getting popped up wherever. Um, tell the world it wasn't you, you know, it wasn't you. You never done that. You never got yourself to here. You're not ruthless. That's not why you're the most one of the most respected men in prison. No, it's because because of what Christ done. You know, it's because Jesus, because Jesus loved me and He gave me like all those teachings from my grandmother. I was able to be loving, you know, and I I got all of that that came back to me. You know, the things that I started losing through my younger years to neglect abuse and and trying to feel belonging uh feel a sense of belonging i started gaining back through the word of god jesus led me through everything they try to put me on schizophrenia like say i was all that try to give me pills and that i said no i'm not taking no pills like you know you can try i'm not gonna take it you know well so look so yeah so how was it uh, getting out of prison for you during that time you know and having made this um you know you've done a bit of healing now and things like that like i said you've had you've gotten this potential where you could blow up and be uh this huge star um, i mean um how, how was it for you walking out of prison i was excited but i was focused you know i try i tried to stay focused i try to continue my bible reading prayer life with, with christ um but to be honest, the, the the freedom kind of got to me, you know. It, st it started getting to me, the phones and all that, like being on YouTube. And um, but it's easier said than done, you know what I mean? Now I'm in, I'm in the free world where, you know, I'm struggling now with with things that I never had to struggle with before, you know. Um, and so yeah, like I just got out, and to be honest, I I went. Like all it took was for me to be tested, you know. I, I had been tested. People were like trolling me and stuff like that, mocking me because I got molested and they're like, oh, you know, whatever. I kind of was like, all right with that. I just kept praying, please, God, you know, please, Lord, help me to turn the cheek. Especially when people's talking and they're like, oh, he went Christian because of this. He went Christian because he's scared of his ops and this and that. And that's like, man, like everything in me was just so like putting up those stuff they're like oh look at him going christian now he's scared of this scared of ops and all of this and i was so like i wanted to love my enemies you know and i was just like please jesus i don't know how to do it please help me to just do what you want me to do i don't want to do what i want to do but it's getting hard you know like this guy's mocking me mocking and like now other people starting to mock me because of him and anyways long story short i failed you know um well because he ended up breach, breaching your parole. Yeah, but... 
uh, the the circumstances surrounding your breach of parole was quite um it went viral pretty much as it was a lot of there was a lot of social media stuff that was going around yeah. and things. not initiated by you but yeah. about about you so there was yeah. a whole bunch of social media stuff and yeah. things like that yeah. you're on you're on parole obviously this whole yeah. time as well that time like i said it was it was so hard you know these people were just you know my whole life i've lived well not my whole life my whole uh, i've become a man where no one's gonna bully me anymore you know and I, you know, like I don't mess with anyone. I don't come and try and I'm not jealous or envious of you, of your money, of anything anyone does. So I, I expected people to leave me alone. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, it wasn't like that. You know, people came and started doing their little mockings of me. And because I didn't talk, you know, talk back, which is what I don't know. People out here don't know, but, you know, real, real sorts of like real people about their life, we don't talk, you know, we don't do videos, you know, if anything, I just act. So that's why I just kind of like had to sit there and just watch everyone talk and say, oh, he's look, he's scared or whatnot. And then it just got to me to the point where he put up um, my Addy and stuff like that. So I'm talking about some real personal things. And like I said, brother, Satan only needs a, a second, you know, to kind of infiltrate that mind. And I acted on it. Yeah. So he went, um, the brother I went and done some post doing boxing and you know said anybody's gonna do to me and I just been hearing all these things like I'm gonna do this I don't care if I do life but everything he's saying that's me you know what I mean like I don't care if I do life I I don't care about prison you know prison is my home that's where that's where I come from you know like and I was just like man I just want this to end you know what I mean and it just didn't seem to end so I just was over and and so I commented publicly you know on his post that he posted about me yeah and i just said oh let's go live on instagram then and we'll just see who goes to jail forever you know like we'll we'll both go fight and we'll go live on instagram and then everyone started commenting and you know started jumping in on it and um i was like oh and uh, as soon as i seen everyone going oh look he's scared now look he doesn't want to smoke i knew i'm gone you know <laughs> i knew like bro that's what they needed was that little pride you know a little bit of pride and you know so i went and waited at the park no one come and then i was greeted by the police the next day so you know i went and done my nine months um for that oh, how was that man going back in that time that must have been uh, pretty painful man going back in that time it was painful brother because my uncle had passed away one of my uncles who had uh, been living with my land at the time um, so he had passed away, so I moved in with my grandmother to take care of my nan now because I was paroled to my mum's house. So now I'm at my nan's and taking care of my nan. Um, but yeah, it was just such a sad thing to see my nan cry like that. And um, I was so shattered. I was like, that's your fault, you know? You're such a weak, like, you're such a weak person, like, to go and leave your grandmother just to prove to the world that you're that you don't cop nothing from no one, you know. And like I said, if if that brother came that that day, he was I was gonna I was honestly like um, I was gonna finish him also, you know. I was going to take his life that day, and that's that's honestly where the the change came was when I went back into the cell. I remember thinking of my grandma and just breaking down, you know, and just thinking, oh man, my nan has to look after herself, you know, and. Thank God my auntie came, you know, and she, she, my auntie was looking after her. But, um, yeah, man, I, I just started remembering the times where I was just broken and lonely, and I remembered how Jesus got me through. But not just that, it was Jesus protected my family, but protected my brothers in jail, you know. OC was a thing that God was guarding, not not the violence. It wasn't, it, we didn't know any better. All we were doing was fighting for our people to keep our islanders and police safe. That's all we were fighting for. We weren't trying, I'm not, a, not trying to get money, not trying to get nothing like that, you know. So, yeah, that all flooded through my mind. And then I sat there and realized, bro, I should be here for about 26 to 30 years, bro. Man, I just said there right there, I was like, God, I give my life to you fully, you know. I give it my whole heart to you now. And so, yeah, that nine months was so tough. We saw, like, 
Yeah, that would have been a tough nine months. Oh, it was, it was tough. That was the, the nine months was tougher than the seven and a half years. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> because now I have to turn the cheek. Even still now, it's been a challenge, you know, since being out. But, man, two and a half years, glory to God, bro. I didn't, I didn't think about it, you know. It's like, bro, two and a half years. I know. Um, in my head, I, I'm still fresh from prison, you know. But that's just, that's how God works, eh, so that you don't, think it's you you know what i mean it's not you it's it's all you so yeah yep. so. um i mean i'm excited for your future so i mean what is the plans baba to be honest uh my plans man is just seeking god just making sure i'm right with god bro that's it you know in this day and age where society is literally revelations and and the bible is just unfolding before us i i don't have time to be thinking about what I want, you know, for me, it's seek first the kingdom and the righteousness of God and whatever he wants for me will come from that, you know, so there's no real plan, brother. I don't have no five-year plan. I don't have nothing like that. It's, um, making sure my day-to-day -day is right with God and self-examining myself to the word. That's it, my brother. You and me both, my brother, you and me yes. both. I mean, um, again, also, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, um, especially mm -hmm. being a brother in Christ as well, you know, hearing what you're doing over there. We're doing the same thing over here. Exactly. Also. Um, so I, I can definitely see that the body of Christ uh, around the world is definitely of one mind at the moment. We're all, mm -hmm. we're all, we're all fighting that one battle. So it's really good to see. It's really positive. Yeah. And um, man, also, I mean, is there any other, um, is there anything else you wanted to add to that? I mean, any messages out there, out there to them youth out there also before we wrap uh, this up that think prison's cool or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, oh, to be honest, man, like, you, everyone can see it for themselves, brother. You know, the world is upside down, bro. There's so much division everywhere, you know, gays versus straight, you know, uh, religion versus religion, Christian versus Christian, boy versus girl. There's so much division that Satan has caused, bro, you know, and it's it's... I know people are, are wanting the truth, you know, and I can say, man, with, with an honest heart, I know that there's a void inside all of your hearts and only Jesus Christ can fill that. You know, I say that with, with all my heart, man, like you won't find it in becoming the best singer. You won't find it in becoming the best actor or anything like that. Sure enough, you can glorify God in, in doing those things, but you know, that's, that's between you and God, whether that is honestly your intentions, but you know, if you really want, to fill that void, man, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth in life, man. Read his word daily and allow him to, you know, work within you. You know, I know a lot of people who are who are conspiracy theorists, you know, they're into all the conspiracies and they're just lost brothers now. They don't like, they know the truth of the darkness, but they, they don't know where to go from there. They're like, well, what do we do? Illuminati or whatever is so tough. We can't even do it. We, we don't want to die. I go, when you're a Christian, brother, and you know where you're heading, you're not afraid to speak the truth. Kill me. You know, I'm going to expose you and I will expose Satan and all his devices. So, yeah, man, like, come come to the Lord, bro. And, you know, there's a lot of us out here who are willing to talk to you. Like I said, I, I reply to everybody on my socials. Um, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm here for God's work. I'm not here to try and do anything like to promote myself man i'm here to be a, a brother in christ to anybody who needs it or who wants it you know so you can message through any time man i'm happy to share the gospel with you and yeah god loves you man and everyone going through addictions you know i've been blessed also to have people come through you know and talk about their addictions and stuff and especially now i just went through a storm with you know breakups that's one thing i've never been through before so thank god that i'm you know, he's just blessing me with these trials and I'm able to, you know, kind of help people. Um, I have experience in those kind of things. So, yeah, man, come through. And like I said, there's there's plenty of us who's willing to, to speak to you and help anyone out. Um, don't feel alone. I love my brothers in prison and in the street life. And I feel like God has led me to, to you know, share the gospel with them. And... Um, yeah, everything I, I've done for OC as well, um, you know, was for my people and my brothers. And now that I left the gang, it wasn't because I was scared or it wasn't because of anything, but it was for them as well, you know. I do it because I love my brothers and I want them to know that there is a, a, there is a purpose for our life, you know, and it's not to continue in prison because that's all... 
the lifestyle that we were doing as you and the G fam, man. Shout out to the to your brothers. You know, you were holding it down for the police and all that is left to do is just to keep fighting till you die. You know, it's just keep prison. That's the whole lifestyle. And, you know, God's got a whole purpose for us. And, you know, um, I thank God for you too, brother, leading the brethren. Um, you've been inspiring to me, you know, um, a, a big encouragement to my walk. Um, uh, thank you. So we're, we're inspiring each other. So we're yeah. inspiring each other, brother, as the bodies of Christ and all of yeah. that with, G with Jesus at the head. So, I mean, um, brother, I mean, look, I'll, I'll leave the brother's links in the description as well. If you do want to reach out and have a yarn with the Uso, um, yeah. feel free. Like he said, he's a, he, um, he never turns anyone down. So definitely don't be yeah. shy about reaching, reaching out if you want some advice about anything. I mean, um, I guess for me as well, also doing this, the, the privilege for me is just, uh, um, like you, I get a lot of people who are struggling with this, that, and the other, and um, I can just give them that one answer. You know what yeah. I mean? It's a, and I, 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 how I always give it to people is I always tell them, you know what I mean? Don't worry about the church part of it. You know what yeah. I mean? Because don't, don't you know, just yeah. start off with your own personal relationship with God, because at the end of the day, the salvation, like you said, it lies through Jesus. It doesn't lie through going to church religiously. Amen. It doesn't, it doesn't, Amen. it doesn't even, it doesn't even rely on reading the Bible religiously. It relies yeah. purely Amen. on what Jesus did for us. That's where the salvation Amen. lies. And unfortunately, bro, most of the Christian churches lost sight of that, bro. They, yeah. they sing, they sing about amazing grace all day long, but they yeah. don't even know what it is. They don't even yeah. know what grace is. Bro. Grace, that's right. Amen. All right, man. Well, also, I'm going to leave you to the rest of your day, but we'll catch up soon. Yeah. Thank you, my brother. I love you, so.